Stay all day, though. You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself. Yes, you to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put the, all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the universal umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is four reasons, and I may have more, but we'll just stick to four for now. Four reasons why you should not write a book. Now, I know a lot of, actually before I even get into explaining this, first of all, let me tell everybody, I have a daily motivation text message that I send out for free to everyone who is in my texting community. If you would like to be in that texting community and get my daily motivation text free of charge every single day, all you gotta do is text me to get into the community and let me know that you wanna be in and once you do that, the next tech, daily motivation text that I send out tomorrow morning, you'll be getting it. My number is 305-384-6894. So text me at that number right there as an added bonus to being in my text community. You can actually respond to any text that I send and you will be texting with me directly. Sometimes people ask me or they assume that my team or a bot or some assistant is handling those texts. But no, when you get a response from that number, that is coming directly from me. I do actually read those texts and I do actually respond to people's text messages. So if you ever get a response to any of those text messages, yes, that is Dre you are texting. That is not Dre's team. That is Dre that is handling those texts, at least for now. I got a lot of people in that text community, but I do take time every day to go through there and respond to text messages. So all that said, when it comes to writing a book, I know a lot of people want to write a book. The good thing about the, the self-publishing industry, the way that it has expanded and it has uh, democratized itself as democratized book publishing period, it makes it very, very easy for anyone to write a book. Anybody can write a book. I got a neighbor actually who lives in my building. He has written 80, what was it 83? Is either 83 or 86 books. And they're all digital eBooks that are available on Amazon. He, I was just talking to him yesterday. I've written 30 more books myself. You can see the books on the bookshelves right here behind me. And anybody can write a book. Literally anybody can write a book. Now, I didn't say anybody can sell a book, but anybody can write a book. You can have a book and have it out. Now, getting it, getting other people to actually buy your book and read it, that's a whole different situation. Now, I've talked about that in other episodes of this show. If you haven't heard them, let me refer you to a couple. I talked about the book business, traditional versus self-publishing and everything in between. That was episode 1893. So if you have not listened to that, then please go listen to that so you understand the book business. Then go listen to episodes 2138, 2139, and 2140. In those three episodes, I talked about things you need to know before, while, and after writing a book. So any of you plan on writing a book, I just gave you four episodes that you absolutely should listen to so that you understand the business of books. It is not just about the writing itself. I know many of your, many people who tell me they want to write a book, they are, that's their, exactly their problem, that they want to write a book. They haven't actually written it. Now, once you finally get the writing part done, that's just a discipline of getting writing done. And if you want someone who can coach you through actually writing a book, that is not me, but I know some people who are good at it. So reach out to me via text and I will connect you with those people. As long as you're willing to invest in yourself, they don't do it for free. So just be clear on that. And then the business side of it. So getting an actual book written is one part. Then the business side of it is actually selling a book. Now, if you want help selling a book, I can help you with that. That is something that I do specialize in. So you can reach out to me again directly via text or just go to work on your game university dot com. And that's the only, uh, only education you'll need is how to actually write a book. You don't have to sit in a college classroom. Now, with all that said, since I had many episodes about book writing, I already mentioned a few of them, written 31 books myself and probably have a bunch more on the way as long as I'm allowed to write them, God willing. That is not to say that everyone should write a book, especially when you have the wrong reasons in mind. Today, I'm going to address some of those reasons, just like I did yesterday in an episode on entrepreneurship. Some people want to get into entrepreneurship for... They have good reasons, but there's some things that they're not understanding. That's why I had yesterday's episode. Same thing when it comes to book writing. There are people who want to write a book because you have, you have some good reasons why you want to do it, but there are some things that you are not, that you are just not aware of, that you are ignorant of. Ignorance simply meaning not to know that I'm going to lay out here today. And if I go through all of these and you still feel good about writing a book, then hey, 
Go write your book. Get on Google Docs, open up Microsoft Word, uh, turn off the internet, and start fucking writing so that your book can get out. So with all that said, let's get into the points. Today's topic, once again, is four reasons to not write a book. Number one, you want to get rich from a book. If you want to write a book because you have the idea that writing a book is going to make you a lot of money, whatever you consider to be a lot, whether it's enough to pay your credit card bill, it's enough to pay your, your car payment, it's enough to pay your rent or your mortgage, or is going to put your kids through college, or is going to pay off your college loans, your student loans, or is going to help you retire grandma, do not write a book if that is the reason for doing it. Let me be clear. Here's a caveat. I am not saying that it is impossible to make a good amount of money from writing books. Personally, I have written 31 books. I sell a lot of books. I ship out a lot of books. You follow me on social media, you may even see sometimes when I'm shipping out books or I'm bringing in inventory and I'm showing you the bundles and all that stuff. I sell a lot of books. If you follow, if you're on social media, you may even see advertisements for the books that I sell. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people also who sell a lot of books. And my friend that I just mentioned who sells a lot of books. He makes thousand dollars a month from thousands of dollars a month, not eight thousand, but thousands with an S per month from selling his digital ebooks. But just because you have the book does not mean the whole world is going to be the pad to your door, waving their credit cards to give you money. If you are writing a book simply because you want it to make you a ton of money, I would suggest that you don't. And here's what I suggest you do instead: I would suggest that you create a what we call a higher ticket offering that can make you much more money in a shorter period of time than the average book would. So if you want to make $10,000 a month, for example, don't write a book and sell it for $10 and then try to sell a thousand of them. Don't do that. Instead, why don't you create a $10,000 offer and find one person to pay you $10,000? Isn't it easier to get one customer than it is to get a thousand? I would guess that it is. It's easier to convince one person or persuade or influence one person to do anything than it is to persuade a thousand people to do something, even if you think the ask is much larger, it's still easier. This is a psychology thing, but this is not, I'm really, I didn't make this point to talk to you about money specifically, but this is more about the book. So let me get back to the book. If you want to learn more about what I just said, that little side note there, join me at workmanyourgameuniversity.com and I will help you with that in, in more detail than you even thought you needed to know. While it is not impossible for you to uh, get rich from writing a book. It is improbable that you will get rich from writing a book. All right? It's not impossible, but it's improbable. Now, are there people who are very well known and very well paid who have written books? Yes, there are. They are famous and rich from writing books. But understand, it is often not just the book itself that did that for them. Even though that might be all you know about, that doesn't mean that's all that's happening. And there's a, a big difference between the two. The book is but one piece of the big puzzle of your business your brain, your framework, the overall ether, your brand, excuse me, your framework and the overall ethos of what you're about. The book is just a piece of it. And I meet a lot of people and even work with people who have written books and they have this idea in mind that their book is this thing that they're just going to, that they're going to push the book. All right, I'm going to get people to buy the book. I'm going to sell this many copies of the book. I'm going to sell the book. All right, a book is usually somewhere between somewhere between zero and let's just say 50 bucks. Even if you were selling a book that cost $50, do you know how many copies of a book you need to sell if you want to make, I don't know how much money you need to make in a month. Let's say if you want to make $5,000 a month, that's $60,000 in a year, which is enough to $60,000 a year is enough to be broke in South Florida. All right. If you know how many copies of a book you had to sell in order to make that much money, let's do the math on it. $60,000 a year, so we break that $60,000 a year down into 12 months. I already did that, but we'll do it again. $60,000 a year into 12 months is $5,000 a month. We'll just say 30 days in a month. That's $166 a day. If you're selling a, and most books don't sell for 50 bucks. Let's just say you're selling your book for, let's just put it at $15. All right, so we'll say your book costs $15. It's on Amazon, it's on sale. That's 11.11 copies. So let's just say, 11 copies of your book a day and that's saying if you have the book on Amazon and Amazon is taking half your money So you might as well double that. Yes, Amazon takes a cut and you don't get the money until 60 days later So you're on a basically Amazon is you're floating Amazon another 60 you're floating Amazon 60 days from the day that you actually make the sale So you got to sell about 20. Let's just say about 25 copies a month a day, excuse me 25 copies a day 
of your book via Amazon. You have no idea who these people are. You can't sell to them again because they're not on your list. You can't collect them. So if you want to sell directly on your website, then you have to have a mechanism for getting people to your site, which either needs to be your social media organically or you're going to be running ads. And you have to offset the cost of the ads. Then you have to make sure you have your list built. You have to have your funnels built, your follow-up emails and sequences, etc., built up on the back end and a process for selling them something else. Because once somebody buys one book from you, they already got that book. What are they going to buy next? Now you got to have all of these pieces in place. So you see how there's a whole ecosystem that goes into this. It is not just, or I'm going to sell books and just the whole world is just going to go crazy and I'm going to be rich tomorrow because I wrote a book or next week or even next year. So understand you can write a book and be rich five years or even one year from now, but it probably won't be just because of the book. Uh, that's the point that I'm making here. So if you write a book, understand that the big bag of money that you are on your way to is not going to be through the book. The big bag of money will be through higher ticket items that you offer, meaning things that cost much more money and you need much fewer sales in order to get the money. All right, one keynote speaking gig can make you the same amount of money as selling 10,000 copies of a book, depending on how much you're charging for each. Do the math on a traditional publishing deal, any of you who's ever had one, or you know anything about one, or you want, want to go ahead and Google one, I've done traditional publishing deals. You have to sell hundreds of thousands of copies of a book to make six figures in royalties. Royalties is just the money that you get paid when you are not the owner of something, but, or at least you have licensed something out on some level. You might be the owner, but you license something out. You got to sell hundreds of thousands of copies to make six figures. That's a hundred thousand dollars minimum from your royalties. And if you are self-published, you have to factor in all the costs that are involved in actually marketing, marketing, selling, and shipping a book since all of those costs fall on you. So listen to episode 1893 where I laid all this out. That is one thing to make a certain amount of money, but what we're really talking about is how much you keep, how much you are taking home, because how much you take home has to be offset by the costs that come with actually making a sale. So if I sell something for $100, but I ran a $25 ad, I have a website that cost me $10, and then I have to factor in labor. I got to pay somebody overseas five dollars, three people five dollars an hour. Now it's 15, 15. I mean, it's 15 plus 10. That's 25, 25 for my ad. That's another 50. So how much did I take home? I took home 50, even though I sold for 100. So you have to factor in all these numbers, and you have to know these numbers as a business owner. All you entrepreneurs out there, I should have added that in the episode a couple of days ago. Uh, don't become an entrepreneur if you don't like knowing numbers. If you don't like knowing numbers, entrepreneurship is not for you. Or if you don't like having somebody who knows numbers who will remind you of those numbers, i.e. an accountant or a bookkeeper, then you probably shouldn't get in that game either. So add that to what I talked about a couple of days ago. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is some reasons why you should not write a book. Number two, you think writing a book is going to blow up your brand and make you famous. So the same way that writing a book is not going to immediately make you rich financially, is not going to make you famous when it comes to your name brand. Just like with the previous point, there are plenty of people out there who are very well known who have also written books, but it's usually not the book itself or the book alone that makes that happen. Sometimes it is, but it's usually not. It does happen for a few people and you could probably name several, but you have to understand how vast the book publishing world is and exactly how many books get published every single year. And if you don't know that information, let me tell you, I will enlighten you. According to one report, Listen closely to these numbers. I really want you to understand the scope of these numbers. Somewhere between 500,000 to a million books get published every single year. 500,000 to 1 million books get published every single year. I would guess it's closer to the 1 million number. Let's divide that down by the day. By the day. Listen closely, folks. 2,740 books are published every single day. Yours is one of the 2,740 getting published every single day. And you think that yours is gonna be the winning lottery ticket that makes you famous. I would not gamble on that. I'm not saying it's impossible, somebody's gonna get famous, but would I gamble on it becoming me out of 2,740? I would say no, I wouldn't bet on just that. And this is including and actually, excuse me, this is not including self-published books. Did you hear what I just said? Any of you who's in the writing world, you understand the scope of this. This is not including self-published books. Way more books are self-published than traditionally published. If you include self-published books, according to one report, that's close to 4 million new books get published every single day. So take that number I just gave you, 2740, multiply it by 4. 
That means there are 10,000 books getting published every single day. 10,000 books are being released every day, whether they're on Amazon, iBooks, Audible, on people's websites, on blogs, on Instagram, whatever. So if it's five or 10 authors that you can name who got famous from writing one book, all right, I don't think you're lying. I believe you. That's as much smaller percentage than you thought it was now that you understand the numbers. Yes? All right, the average book in the United States sells less than 200 copies in a year. And I would guess, I would say that that's actually very generous. Those, those 200 copies are, that number is being buoyed by the, the books that are all the way up, up at the top selling hundreds of thousands of copies, like the Michelle Obamas and such. You take those out, the average book in the United States doesn't sell 200 copies in a year. The average book in the United States sells less than, I would say, less than 50 copies in a year. And in a lifetime, the average book sells less than 1,000 copies, ever. Since the invention of the printing press in 1440, the year 1440, Google estimates that over 129 million books have been published. Million with an M. 129 million books. And that's not counting self-published books, which they can't even keep track of because there's so many of them. All this is said to say, if you're writing a book and you want that book to make your brand known, you better have a strategy for making it happen. Just writing a book and putting it out ain't going to get it done. All right, so if any of you had that idea, perish the thought. Doesn't mean don't write your book, but you need to have a, you need to have additional strategies on top of that. And, and when I tell you about my university, I can tell you how I can help you do that. You have to have these processes in place. It's not just writing a book alone is going to do it for you. And there are people who I work with, people who I'm working with currently, who have, who are seeing this and realizing it that the book itself, just having it, doesn't actually mean anything, and doesn't mean anything to anyone other than you, because other people don't even know that you exist, even though you wrote a book. Number three. Today's topic again is some reasons why you may not want to write a book. Number three, actually reason why you should not write a book. Number three, you want to tell your story. If you want to tell your story, that is not a good enough reason to write a book. Yes, you heard me correctly. Some of you are perplexed right now. You're, you're tilting your head to the side like a, a dog that heard a, a strange noise. If you just want to tell your story, that is not enough reason to write a book. Let me tell you why. I met a lot of people who wanted to write a book or do something like professional speaking because they have a story that they want to tell. The challenge with this is similar to the challenge with getting rich and also the challenge of being famous. It's connected to the first two points. The ocean is a lot bigger than it looks from the shore. The ocean looks small when you're standing there looking at it sometimes, or you might think that it is small, but it's a lot bigger than it looks like when you get in the water. Also, because unlike with books, every single human on the planet Guarantee, guarantee without fail, every human being on this planet has a story. Not everybody has a book. Everybody has a story. And everybody thinks that their story is interesting to at least them. And they think their story would be interesting to other people. And if you think you should write a book because you have a story that's interesting to other people, here's the challenge. Why should I stop thinking about my story to listen to your story? What am I going to get out of your story? I mean, I really don't care that much about your story unless you happen to be super world famous. If you're like, you know, Michelle Obama or you're a, a former president or you're some famous athlete, you know, Ronaldo, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, somebody like that, then maybe I'll be interested in your story and I'll stop thinking about mine for long enough to listen to yours. Everybody else, the rest of us, even people like myself, we got to extrapolate some value from our story that would actually give, add value to another person's life. Just telling the story alone ain't enough. I have a book. I have plenty of books. None of my books is just me telling a story except my first one, Buy a Game. And that was specifically to a target audience of ball players who have been following me on YouTube up to that point. But every other book that I've written, I couldn't just tell my story because I'm not that famous to where I could just tell my story and everybody's going to be like, oh my God, this is amazing. I had to tell my story and at the same time that I'm telling any kind of story about me, I had to extract the value from it and tell you what you're going to do with it that will be useful to you. But just me telling my story alone, you got to be super world famous for that to be enough. And most of us are not that. If you're that, then go ahead and just tell your story and that'll be enough. But if you're not that, and if you are that, let me be clear, if you are that, you already got publishing companies calling you saying, hey, we, wanna, we want you to write a book. I'm reading a book right now about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was that kind of person. When he first blew up in golf, he had publishing companies coming to him, offering him all kinds of money to just write his story and write a memoir and just tell his story about his own life. The rest of us, uh, you ain't that famous. Uh, if you're not that level of famous, you gotta extract some value from your story, not just tell the story alone. So what makes your story, here's the question, what makes your story more valuable than anyone else's? Why should anybody else care? Because they also have stories. You would need an answer to this question if you wanna sell your story as a book 
Or here's what you can do. You can work around this by you can weave your story in while at the same time giving people the value that is extracted from the story. Just like any of you read my book, Work On Your Game, I extracted value from my story. That's where I came up with the framework, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. It's not about Dre Baldwin. It's about how my experiences led to me understanding these things and here's how you can use these things that will help you in building your story. But my story alone would not carry the book. Moving on to point number four. Well, it would carry the, let me back up. It would carry the book, but it wouldn't sell the book. That's a better way of saying it. Point number four. Today's topic, once again, is some reasons why you should not write a book. Number four reason. Somebody told you you should write a book. All right, this is, what, this is the worst reason. Somebody told you you should write a book is a bad reason. Somebody told you you should do something is a bad reason to do anything. Even if that person, they could be very smart, very intelligent, very accomplished. Just because somebody told you to do something is not a good reason to do it. Well, I understand you may be flattered by the suggestion that somebody told you you should write a book. Writing a book takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. Then you have to go sell the book. Then you have to get people to actually read it to get whatever is in the book. That's a lot of hard steps just to get your point across, especially for a product that sells on average for about 15 to 25 dollars. That's a lot of work. And a book that, and again, a product that in its lifetime might sell a thousand copies. A thousand times 15 is fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money, right? Is it, is, it, is it is nothing it's not nothing i mean depending on the uh, the frame from which you're looking at it fifteen thousand dollars if you saw fifteen thousand dollars laying on the ground would you bend over and pick it up yes you would i don't care how much money you had fifteen thousand dollars is nothing to sneeze at however we're talking about over your lifetime so if you're 25 and you live to 85 fifteen thousand dollars over the next 60 years is that a lot of money let's divide fifteen thousand by 60 years two hundred fifty dollars a year okay that's two hundred fifty dollars a year that you're going to get for the rest of your life, is that a lot of money? No, it's not a lot of money anymore, right? So, would you? why would you go through all that work just because somebody told you you should write a book? It's not worth it now when you do the math. Right, that's why math matters. Right, so is there an easier way for you to get your whatever out to the world besides writing a book? It probably is, because your time is a resource and you may be better off putting, on some, putting into something that produces a higher return on investment than writing a book. Writing a book is not for everybody. There are some reasons why you should write a book, but I've just laid out some reasons why you should not. Let me recap them. Today's topic, once again, four reasons why you should not write a book. And I've done many episodes on book writing, which I referred to you, referred you to earlier. They are down below in the show notes. If you are serious about writing a book, listen to those episodes. And then if you're still serious about writing a book and selling it, get in touch with me. I'll tell you how in a second. First of all, if you want to get rich from your book, don't write a book. It's not impossible for you to get rich from writing a book, but understand that it is not usually the book itself that makes people get rich. Even though they may be rich and they have a book, there are probably other things that came with it. You got to look deeper into the game than just what you see on the surface. Number two, you think writing a book is going to blow up your brand and somehow make you famous. Just like getting, just like the getting rich point, there are plenty of books that are people are very well known who have also written books, but it's usually not from the book alone. There are between 500,000 and a million books published every year. You include self-published, you're talking about 4 million new book titles every single year. There are 5 or 10 people who get famous from writing a book usually every year. The average book in the United States sells less than 200 copies. I think that's generous. Less than 1,000 copies over his lifetime. In the lifetime of the printing press, there have been over 129 million books published. It's not going to happen just because you wrote it and stuck it on the shelf. It does not happen. Number three, you want to tell your story. A lot of people want to get into speaking business or the writing business or the some kind of business where they're out on stage because they believe they have a story to tell. The problem, everybody in the world has a story to tell. So why should anybody listen to your story over everyone else's? If you can't answer that question, then you should not write a book about it. And number four, somebody told you you should write a book. This is the worst reason to do anything because somebody else told you to do it. Well, I understand you may be flattered by the suggestion and it serves your ego. Writing a book takes a lot of work and a lot of time and effort. And then there are several other steps that come with it before anybody will give you money for your book if they ever Ever give you money for your book because we already told you what the average book sells over the course of a lifetime that's the average so there's a bunch of books that are below average they don't sell that many so your time is a resource that you may be better off putting on something that produces a higher return on investment so you should probably think about that strategically before you commit to writing a book how can you do that text me first of all to get my daily motivation straight to your phone my number is 305-384-6894 and go to work on your game university.com that's where you get access to my nine part work on your game system there's a whole program in there and inside of that Work On Your Game University, you will be getting on live calls with me directly, either my group or one-on-one -on -one programs. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com so you can see all your options for getting started right now. Work on your game. Dre, all day.